Hello, this is His Word Unveiled. We have just finished the book of Judges in our last video, and today we are hitting the book of Ruth. So, um, yeah, let's do this. We're just moving on chapter by chapter and hitting book by book by book in the Word of God, and we are reading on purpose. We are reading to learn and to grow and to be intimately connected to our God, to the Lord. Um, it's beautiful. It's the way that he offers himself and invites us into himself is incredible. And let's not be ridiculous and and just say, no, thank you. No, thank you. Don't need blessing today. No, thank you. Don't need strength and wisdom. No, thank you. Peace really isn't my thing. Um, let's not go there. Let's just see that God is saying, here I am and here's what I have for you. And let's reach out and grab a hold. Let's move forward. Let's take the steps to be able to receive, to be able to see. And that comes from being in the word of God and, and rehearsing and, and renewing our minds and um, learning truth and standing on truth and being consistent and disciplined in that. So good. Um, okay, so our reading today is Ruth chapters 1 and 2. So go ahead, hit pause. Do that. That is your reading. So take some time with the Lord and, and just read that. Just be in the presence of the Lord. Read that. Um, take a moment with the Lord. Take a moment and just be listening. Just be still so that you can be moved into blessing and into um, into life. So, hit pause. Ruth chapters 1 and 2. I'm going to pray. Let's get this thing started. Father, we, we thank you and we acknowledge you and your bigness and in the way that you love. Father, thank you. We are we are so unworthy, yet you choose. You choose to just pursue us and love us over and over and over again. And we say thank you. Lord, as we begin um, another book of the Bible, we just pray that you do the same thing that you've done with us up until now and just meeting with us and everything and speaking and responding to our pursuit of you. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're so grateful for the life that you give, for the way that you offer yourself to us. Father, help us to see, help us to um, to be aware of our need, help us to be aware of how great you are and all that you have, that you're pouring out um, upon us. May we see that as a blessing. May we see that as you and, and in your goodness that it's given. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we're excited for today for whatever you have to teach us and speak to us. Lord, may we open our hearts, help us to open our hearts in, in complete vulnerability and complete willingness and expectation so that we can hear you speaking and receive what you have for us today in this very moment. Um, meet us here, Lord. We love you in your name, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're starting in Ruth, chapter one, brand new book of the Bible. Um, starting off fresh, starting off new. So let's, let's go. This is the story of Ruth and Naomi. Incredible story, beautiful story of commitment, of, of love. Um, so good. So it starts off, I'll just read verse one. Now it came about in the days when the judges governed that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the land of Moab with his wife and his two sons. So we have this sweet little family of four, um, this man, his wife, and two sons. And it says that they went to the land of Moab. So they're journeying here in the land of Moab. Verse 2, it says the name of the man was Eli Malik and, and the name of his wife, Naomi. So we have Eli Malik and Naomi, husband and wife, and their two sons. They are now in the land of Moab. Okay. It says at the end of verse 2, Now they entered the land of Moab and remained there. Then we see that Eli Malek, Naomi's husband, he died. So Naomi now is a widow, and she is left with her two sons. Then those two sons took for themselves, they're in the land of Moab, they both take Moabite women, and they marry them. So we have Naomi, who is a widow. Her two sons are now married to two Moabite um, women. One was named Orpah and one was named Ruth. So, then we see that both Melon and Chilion, 
the two sons of Naomi that they die. So Naomi, she loses her husband, then she loses her two sons. She is left with two daughters-in-law, and that is Orpah and Ruth. So now it is just the three women um, who are left. And here's where Naomi, she urges her two daughters-in-law, she says, go return to your house. I have nothing for you here. I have nothing that I can give you. Go return to your house, you know, get remarried, find a husband, start a life, have a family, continue to live your life. And we see Naomi urging, um, urging them in verse nine, may the Lord grant that you may find rest each in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. So they're weeping. This is an intimate moment. You know, they both, all three of them have lost their husbands. Naomi is now saying, okay, I'm going to be on my own. You women just go, go, go start your lives. Go have a full, a full life. Go get married. Go have kids. Go, go have a full life. They're weeping. And this is just an emotional time for all three of them. Verse 10, it says, and they, and they said to her, so they, both of them, no, we will surely return with you to your people. But Naomi said, return my daughters. And she urges them, I have nothing. Even if I would have two sons now, would you wait for them? Like they would be so much younger. I have nothing. I can't give you a husband. I, I have nothing. There's no point in staying. So she urges them to leave. She says, no, my daughters, for it is harder for me than for you. For the hand of the Lord has gone forth against me. So she's saying, I am in a state where I'm just an emotional wreck. I have nothing, I have nothing left to give. I lost my husband, I lost my my sons. This is harder for me, you go back. This will be better for you, um, urging them to leave. Verse 14 says, and they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And here's the distinction between these two women. Orpah was emotional just as much. She had lost her husband. She is seeing the way that her mother-in-law is grieving from her husband and her sons. Orpah is feeling this. She's weeping. She doesn't want to leave. She's torn. She kisses her mother-in-law. She's expressing her emotion. She's expressing her love. She's expressing her heart to Naomi, her mother-in-law. But then we see that Ruth clung to her. So Ruth is weeping. Ruth is feeling this. She's grieved just as Orpah is for her mother-in-law, but Orpah kisses her and in almost this farewell and almost this, okay, I don't want to do this, but I am. I want you to know I love you, but Ruth clings to her. Ruth sticks with her. She's joined. She's, she's held fast to Naomi. She clings to her, stating this this steadfastness and no, but seriously, I'm not leaving. I'm remaining with you. I'm weeping. I'm feeling this emotion. And, and it's not only speaking this, it's not only appearing this, but this is what's in my heart that, that I deeply care for you, that I deeply love you, that I see the state you're in. I know the state I'm in and choosing to cling to her, choosing to stick with her, to be faithful and committed to her. Verse 15 says, Then she said, Behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. Verse 16 says, But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Remember, she is a Moabite woman. She is, she is not an, Israel, an Israelite. She is not from the nation of Israel. She is from the land of Moab. She is a Moabite woman, and she is speaking, No, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. She's turning away from everything that she could have that's comfortable, that she knows, and she's choosing to cling to her mother-in-law through this time of grief, through this time, this hard season in her life, in their lives, and she's choosing to go, um, go through it with her mother-in-law. Your God shall be my God. In verse 17, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. Thus may the Lord do to me, and worse, if anything but death parts you and me. This commitment is beautiful that Ruth says, no, I am in this. I am in this for life. I am in this until I die. I am in this fully committed, fully with you in everything. Absolutely 100% in its entirety. I'm here and I'm here sticking with you. Ruth made a choice and she said it in her heart to choose to remain with Naomi. She pushed aside everything, um, 
everything and thinking of what she could have. She pushed her, herself aside. She laid herself aside and thought of Naomi. I mean, how easy it would have been. Yeah, okay, I don't want to leave, but at the same time, you know, what if I'm alone for the rest of my life? What if I never have children? What if I never have a family? To never have a husband again? To never be loved? She could have been so concerned and so full of fear. She could have been driven by fear to run back, to start this life, this in selfishness. She could have been driven and, and um, you know, gravitated to what could have made her happy, to what her emotions were telling her that she needed um, in that time. She stood firmly, though, against her fears of loneliness and against um, her fears of missing out, against selfishness. And in all of that, she pushed herself aside and she said, no, but Ruth, I'm in this for you. We're going to grieve together. We're going to heal together. We're going to live together. We're going to do this thing called life um, together. It was never about her. She never made it about herself. How beautiful her commitment was. So verse 22 Jumping to the end of this chapter, it says, So Naomi returned, and with her, Ruth the Moabitess, who her, or her daughter-in-law, who returned from the land of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. So they leave then the land of Moab and go back to where Naomi was from. So her hometown, they are traveling. So Ruth and um, Naomi decide to go back to where Ruth had lived, her hometown, her people, her everything, her way of living. So they travel together, these two widows, these two women who are committed, who are together, who are in this um, together for life. So we see them then traveling to Bethlehem. So they're leaving Moab, traveling to Bethlehem. And it says that they come here at the beginning of barley harvest. Harvest is so my word this year. So um, just love the thought of that, that they're leaving everything behind. They're leaving the past. They're leaving this pain. They're leaving, not denying it, not running away from it, but they're leaving and they're entering into this new season of growth, of gathering in the blessing, of seeing, of seeing God's hand in this. Love that. Okay. This takes us into then chapter two. It says, now Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a man of great wealth of the family of Eli Malik, whose name was Boaz. So this is just laying this out at the beginning of the chapter saying, hey, there's this man named Boaz who is their family, a very, very close family member. Verse 2 says, and Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after one in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, go my daughter. Now we remember back in the Old Testament, I believe it's in Leviticus where it talks about, um, when you have a field, not taking everything, not scraping every little piece of grain and, and um, piece of produce, don't grab everything, leave some for the poor, leave some so that they can glean, that they can come and the leftovers can be for them, that it can benefit them. And this is what Ruth is asking, let me go glean in these fields of, of um, those men who who um, leave some of their gleanings, who leave some of the stuff in the field, let me go and glean. Let me go and walk in the field and gather what I can for us. Ruth is out saying, I want to provide. I want to help. I want to do my part. I'm clinging to you, not just to cling and and not, um, not be a part of this relationship, not help in any way. Let me go glean. Let me find favor in someone's eyes that they see, that they are helping out, that they're willing for me to work for them. And Naomi said, okay, go. Yes, go glean. Go, um, just go. Verse 3 says, So she departed and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the portion of the field belonging to Boaz. Not just happened to. This is so the Lord ordaining this and leading Ruth to this specific field that was Boaz, um, the field of Boaz, who is a very close relative of um, Naomi. Okay. So then we see in verse 4, And now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, May the Lord be with you. And they said to him, May the Lord bless you. So we see automatically this beautiful relationship, the kind of man that Boaz is, that he is coming to those who are working for him, reaping his fields, out there working, 
you know, gathering up the harvest, doing this work, and Boaz is out there encouraging them. May the Lord be with you. He's just speaking this to his workers. He's speaking this upon just the people who are living with him, working for him. And they said to him, may the Lord bless you. So we see this relationship. We see the kind of man that he is. We see the response. We see Boaz speaking life and encouragement, respecting and honoring those who are with him, who are working for him. And we see the response in uh, may the Lord bless you, that those who are working for him desire for him to be blessed, desire for him to have the best and acknowledging the heart that Boaz has. And I love how the Lord chooses to lay that out, saying, this is a good man. And watch me connect this good man with this fully committed woman. So beautiful. Um, okay, then verse 5, it says, Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? So Boaz notices Ruth. He notices her hard work. He notices her beauty. He notices her just being out there, the presence, the way that she is presenting herself out there gleaning in the fields. Because let me tell you, when, when we as women, when we as men, when we live our lives in purity, in integrity, in strength, in authenticity, in all of those characteristics, when we're living life with those characteristics and in that way, in a real, in a real way, not for show, but this is who we are. When we do that, people notice, people pay attention, and, and there are blessings. There's a crazy harvest for that kind of life, for those kind of decisions and how we live our life. And Boaz notices Ruth, and he says, whose woman is this? And in verse 6, it says, The servant in charge of the reapers replied, She is the young Moabite woman who returned with Naomi from the land of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Thus she came and has remained from morning until now. She's been sitting in the house for a little while. So Boaz hears this. Boaz hears that this is a woman who came from Moab, who is committed, who stuck with her mother-in-law through a really hard season that was committed and faithful to her and is now working. I mean, the servant says that she was, she is here, has been here from morning until now. All day she's been working hard. All day she has been helping and providing and remaining with her mother-in-law, Naomi. And Boaz knows Naomi. This is a very close family member. So then Boaz goes to Ruth and speaks this to her. Listen carefully, my daughter. Do not go to glean in another field. Furthermore, do not go on from this one, but stay here with my maids. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. Indeed, I have commanded the servants not to touch you. When you are thirsty, go to the water jars and drink from what the servants draw. So he is saying, I am going to protect you. I am going to help you. Remain in this field and I will provide for you. I will give you security. I will I will give you blessing. Remain here in this field. And here's Ruth's response in verse 10. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? So she says, I'm not even an Israelite. I'm from the land of Moab. I'm a foreigner, a stranger. I'm just here, you know, with my mother-in-law. And she says, how is it that, that I have found favor in your sight, that you have noticed me, um, that you have offered me this protection? Verse 11, Boaz replied to her, all that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully reported to me. And how you left your father and your mother in the land of your birth and came to a people that you did not previously know. May the Lord reward your work and your wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and indeed have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. So she is saying, I'm not like the rest. I'm not like these people. I am, I am a Moabite woman. I am from the land of Moab. Yet Boaz, Boaz is this good man who sees beyond that, who sees beyond where you came from and, and what you're all about. And defined, he didn't define her as this Moabite woman who is full of, of sin and being away from God and all of this. He saw and he paid attention and he asked questions and he got down to the truth of who Ruth was, that she was a committed woman, that she selflessly gave up all of her dreams, all of her desires, all of her plans for her life. She gave them up 
so that she could be there for her mother-in-law. And again, when we live life like that in a selfless, giving, thoughtful, giving to other people, thinking of other people, being real, being committed, being full of integrity, modesty, strength, purity, all of these things, people notice. And Boaz saw this in Ruth. He noticed it and he went and spoke life into this woman, into um, this beautiful life, this beautiful woman that he noticed her to be. In verse 13, it says, Then she said, I have found favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and indeed have spoken kindly to your maidservant. So just as we said, she is acknowledging and she is saying, you are, you are going beyond, over and beyond in comforting me. She is not with this. She didn't come and say, look, I've given up everything. I deserve this. I deserve that. You know, I, I gave this up, so I should have this. She didn't have that. She was just there being so, um, so real in this, so, so real with her commitment. There was, there's no hidden agenda with Ruth. She was just there in the, in the purity of, I'm here for Naomi. I'm, I'm here committed in this. We're going to walk this out together. And she, in that, and in that humility, in that gentleness within her own spirit, then she was able to receive this comfort. She was able to receive blessing that was spoken into her life. Just this beautiful, we see this beautiful connection, this beautiful way um, that God had these two just beautiful people, Boaz and Ruth, just coming together in, in, in such a beautiful way, a beautiful relationship. Um, okay, so... Then we see Boaz even just extending his kindness and having her come and, and sit at his table and dipping her bread into the vinegar, giving her the best, allowing her to sit, you know, with those who work with, with him, those who, who, who dwell with Boaz, that he is inviting her to come to the table. He is blessing her. He is giving um, to her. Um, he is saying, let her glean, let her have. He said also, purposely pull out some of the grain that, that you reap, that you gather together and lay it out there so that when she comes, she has even more. She is blessed even more um, in picking these up that Boaz goes over and beyond in giving to her and providing for her and blessing her and being um, and favoring her and in, in showing this favor. So good. So then she goes um, back to her home, it says. She took it up and went into the city and her mother-in-law saw which she had gleaned. And she says, where did you glean today? And where did you work? She's amazed with all that Ruth brought back. And Ruth told her, it says, so she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said the name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. Then in verse 20, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, may he be blessed of the Lord who has not withdrawn his kindness to the living and to the dead. Again, Naomi said to her, the man is our relative. He is one of our closest relatives. This is such a God thing. And in God's connections and saying that, that, that Naomi now is just amazed and saying, look at all this, that God has brought us here to this field and for, for you, Ruth, to meet Boaz, that he is one of our closest relatives. Um, and just bringing this up and saying he is being so kind to not only Ruth and myself, but he's being kind to my husband, that he, this is the way he is treating Ruth and us is, is his, um, this incredible way of his showing respect and honor to, um, to Naomi's husband and to Ruth's husband who has died and just this complete honor, complete respect and his kindness. And that Naomi brought that up. He has not withdrawn his kindness to the living and to the dead. Verse 21 says, Then Ruth the Moabitess said, Furthermore, he said to me, You should stay close to my servants until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi is saying, This is good. This is this is so this is so good. And Naomi is seeing this. Naomi is seeing the blessing in this. And and the Lord is placing upon her heart the next steps in this and how this connection can go deeper and further. And and I love just the awareness of this. I love I love how Naomi is receiving this and seeing it for what it truly is. Verse 23 then, finishing this chapter up, says, So she stayed close by the maids of Boaz in order to glean until the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. And she lived with her mother-in-law. So again, this blessing came from her decision to stay with her mother-in-law, to give up all of her plans and what she wanted, what she could have went after, Ruth, she gave all that up to cling to her mother-in-law. And I love how this ended in just saying, and she lived with her mother-in-law. 
because she chose to cling, she lived here with her mother-in-law and these blessings are coming. That they came at this time of harvest and this harvest is coming. That they're seeing this blessing. They're seeing this, this wonderful, good, solid man um, showing favor to now Naomi and Ruth. And it was all in. These blessings are coming in because of Ruth's choice, because of her commitment, because of her remaining with her mother-in-law and giving everything that once that she knew as home and as as comfortable everything that was known she gave it up to to the an, a new place and a new people a new god a new way of everything and and that harvest that harvest is there that harvest is legit that harvest is so present and active in Ruth's life now and Naomi's life um Love this, love these two chapters, and it's not over. We have two chapters to go, and, and just the way that God continues to roll in these connections and allows this to come to be and allows this harvest to just be so open and for real, and their life is incredible. So good. So um, beautiful story. The beauty, the beauty of selflessness, the beauty of gentleness, the beauty of humility, all of these characteristics we see so powerfully in the book of Ruth. Um, it should motivate us, it should inspire us, it should challenge us, and through reading, through our reading, um, it should change us. It, and that's what the Spirit does. We can be all those things. We can be challenged, motivated, inspired, you know, moved to doing something. We can do that all just through um, talking this out, through just hearing other people, through, through even hearing and just reading through the word. But when we read and when we allow this truth, this message to just sink into our hearts and we allow the spirit to take over and we're choosing to hear the spirit speaking and we're choosing to receive what, what, what Father has for us to soak into our hearts. When we let the spirit, you know, when we let him be Lord over this time, when we read with intent and not just read like, oh, this is so good, like what a good man and, and what a beautiful woman and what an awesome connection. Yeah, we can be moved by that. But when we let the spirit come in, we're changed. So let's be motivated. Let's be challenged. Let's be inspired and let's be changed. Let's let God take this story and do something in us and start working things up within us and changing us, changing our circumstances because of how we perceive them and how we're living in them. So good. God's power, his word, who he is, his heart, um, how he just gives himself to us. May we receive that and choose to walk in that. So good. May we be committed. May we be faithful to the Lord, to trusting the Lord, no matter how uncomfortable it is, no matter how different, no matter how, um, no matter how lonely we fe we feel, no matter how much we feel like a stranger and a foreigner as Ruth did, um, let's be committed to trusting the Lord and walking with Him and clinging to Him and, and allowing Him to move us into blessing, into our harvest. So good. Thanks for walking this out with me. There's more in the story of Ruth. Um, our next video, we will finish up the book of Ruth. It's short, it's sweet, it's powerful, it's good. Let's keep in it. Let's keep growing. Let's keep trusting the Lord. So good. Thanks for walking this out. Hope to see you soon.